Can the universe really create itself from nothing? Richard Dawkins says yes, but John Lennox says that's nonsense. Let's dive into this debate. I listened to Hawking's attempt to do that. This is his book, The Grand Design. This is his central statement. Because there is a law of gravity, the universe can and will create itself from nothing. Pardon? Let's try that again. Because there is a law of gravity, because there is something, the universe can and will create itself from nothing. Flat contradiction number one. The origin of the universe has puzzled humans for centuries. Scientists and philosophers have proposed various explanations, from the Big Bang to naturalistic processes. But can something truly come from nothing? In fact, the financial crisis occurred because some people thought mathematics can create money. <laughs> Join John Lennox as he explores the limitations of naturalistic explanations and makes a compelling case for a transcendent cause. Can the universe really exist without a creator? It means, ladies and gentlemen, that nonsense remains nonsense even if scientists talk it. It is utterly absurd. In this thought-provoking video, Lennox challenges our understanding of the cosmos and encourages us to consider the implications of something rather than nothing. Let's explore this fascinating question together. The standard model of the universe means that there is a beginning. And so we have to face the fact that there's a singularity. And the most recent results of Bord, Vilenkin, and Guth, who are the world authorities of this, mathematicians and theoretical astronomers, it is said that an argument is what convinces reasonable men, and a proof is what it takes to convince even an unreasonable man. With the proof now in place, cosmologists can no longer hide behind the possibility of a past eternal universe. There is no escape. They have to face the problem of a cosmic beginning. So they have to get a universe from nothing. Now you see, as a Christian, I don't have a problem with this, because the universe came from nothing physical, but it didn't come from nothing. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and God is spirit. He's not physical, but he's not nothing. But let's get rid of God now, and the wonder of modern science is we are now forced into a corner because we've got to get God from nothing. Now, I listened to Hawking's attempt to do that. This is his book, The Grand Design. This is his central statement. Because there is a law of gravity, the universe can and will create itself from nothing. Pardon? Let's try that again. Because there is a law of gravity, because there is something, the universe can and will create itself from nothing. Flat contradiction number one. But it's worse than that. Because there is a law of gravity, he doesn't say because gravity exists, and now opens up this can of worms. It's a very interesting can of worms. The worms are very fat and interesting. Um, <clears throat> the idea that laws can create something. That's absurd, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, the financial crisis occurred because some people thought mathematics can create money. Lewis saw it years ago. One plus one equals two. But adding up won't give you, well, let me give you an, a, an illustration of it. Peter Atkins is a very famous physical chemist and a pretty contrarian atheist. And I've debated him as well. And I asked him, what do you think created the universe, Peter? And he said mathematics. And I'm afraid I was very rude. I laughed. Um, <laughs> And he said, what are you laughing at? He said, look, Peter, I'm sorry, I am a mathematician. That must be the silliest thing I've ever heard. He said, why? Well, let me put it to you simply. One plus one equals two. Did that ever put two pounds in your pocket? The idea that by doing sums you can create something physical is nonsense because science is an abstract discipline. Mathematics is an abstract discipline. And as Lewis points out, the average law is if you got A, you'll get B, but you've got to catch A in the first place in order to get your B. This is elementary stuff, because there is a law of gravity. But what on earth, anyway, would a law of gravity mean if there's no such thing as gravity? So that's the second major point. The third is even worse. The universe will create itself. 
Well, now, abstract from that. I love language, you know, and logic. X creates Y. What does that mean? Well, roughly speaking, if you've got X, you'll get Y. X creates X. If you've got X, you'll get X. And what does that mean? It means, ladies and gentlemen, that nonsense remains nonsense even if scientists talk it. <laughs> it is utterly absurd. This is an attempt to get a universe from nothing. It does no such thing. Now, how can you get a universe from nothing? With great difficulty. But one of the things to do is redefine nothing, as Lawrence Krauss does. What would you say to somebody that wrote this in an essay given to you? Because something is physical, nothing must be physical, especially if you define it as the absence of something. What? <laughs> That's on page five of Krauss's book, A Universe from Nothing. It's philosophical nonsense, ladies and gentlemen. Philosophical nonsense. Now, I find this very interesting. God gets rejected. The science tells us that there's a singularity at which space-time arose. So you've got to get a universe from nothing. The attempts border on the ridiculous and the absurd. But I'm very fortunate. I get to debate some very interesting people. One of them was Alan Guth at the Harvard-MIT faculty club. He's the author of the theory of inflation. He's one of the world's top cosmologists. So I said to him, in a very friendly discussion, I said, Alan, tell me, I said, um, when you astrophysicists use the word nothing, you don't mean it in the ordinary philosophical down-to-earth sense of absence of anything. He said, of course we don't. I said, thank you very much. And if you look at the books carefully that claim to get a universe from nothing, they do no such thing. And the philosophers have had a field day with it. Because, you see, Hawking is a brilliant scientist. But he hasn't a clue about philosophy. At the beginning of this book in which he makes this statement, he says philosophy is dead. And then he writes a book on the philosophy of science. It really, and I'm, I'm stressing this because it disturbs me greatly, that this kind of stuff is being marketed as serious science when it is logical nonsense. The concept of nothing is tricky. When we say nothing, we often mean the absence of something. But when we apply this idea to the origin of the universe, we're talking about a different kind of nothing. We're talking about the absence of everything, no matter, no energy, no space, no time. This is what philosophers call absolute nothingness. The question is, can something come from absolute nothingness? The short answer is no. Why? Because nothing doesn't have any properties or potential to produce something. Think of it like a blank canvas. If there's no paint, no brush, and no artist, how can a beautiful painting emerge? Many scientists and philosophers agree that the universe had a beginning often referred to as the Big Bang. But what caused this beginning? Some suggest that the universe simply popped into existence from nothing, without any cause or explanation. However, this raises more questions than answers. If the universe can come from nothing without a cause, why can't anything else? Why can't a rabbit suddenly appear in front of us from thin air? In the Christian worldview, Yahweh is seen as the transcendent and eternal being who exists outside of the physical universe. The Bible teaches that God spoke the universe into existence out of nothing. In Genesis 1, 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. This suggests that before the creation of the universe, there was nothing except God. From a Christian perspective, the concept of creation ex nihilo out of nothing, is grounded in the belief that God is all-powerful and capable of bringing everything into existence. God's act of creation is not dependent on pre-existing materials or external factors. It is important to note that the question of the universe's origin is a topic that has also been explored scientifically. The Big Bang Theory, for example, suggests that the universe originated from an extremely dense and hot state approximately 13.8 billion years ago. However, this scientific theory does not address the ultimate cause or origin of the universe. Ultimately, the question of the universe's origin invites us to ponder the nature of existence, causality, and the limits of human understanding. 
While different individuals may hold different beliefs and perspectives, as a Christian, I find meaning and purpose in the belief that the universe is not a product of chance or nothingness, but rather the intentional creation of a loving and all-powerful God.